we're gonna see how powerful this motor is. We're gonna see if we can go zero to 60. Hi, welcome to another episode of Lumberjack Garage. So you can tell my hair is getting longer, way longer than the last video because I'm on a haircut strike until we get the Duke done. Do you know about the Duke? Well, let me tell you. If you haven't watched any of those videos, there, there's a link. Get caught up because we're hitting it next. Once this truck is done, and by the way, it is, we're hitting the Duke. So come on, let's go for a final test drive and this thing's out of here. This is such a sweetheart. It starts in like a half a turn. Ready? Right there. Let's go. So this is our regular test route. And right now we're coming on to where it's normally pretty bumpy. And you're going to notice this era of F100 has the independent I-beam front suspension. Driving it basically with a single finger. Well, gently. I can even take my hand off the wheel. This thing goes arrow straight down the road, going 50 miles an hour, not even bumpy hardly. Look at this. So Ford had, Ford had a very unique suspension system, totally different than Chevy, totally different than Dodge, and it was their claim to fame, this independent I-beam. Which way? This way, I think. That's the wrong road! Stop! There's a race! This road's prone today, isn't it? So rocky, but this pickup will get us through. This pickup is a 1971 Ford, the rugged individualist that works like a truck but rides like a car. Ford's unique twin I-beam front suspension is the reason. Two front axles instead of one that step over bumps independently for a smooth, car-like ride. In fact, there's this movie called Mr. Majestic with Charles Bronson. And he had, I think, a 70 or 71 F100. It was the hero truck. was jumping over boulders. There was like underbody camera shots. And it sold so many F100s because these things, they can swallow up bumps. In fact, even to this day, off-road racers have modified this front end system. They've lengthened the arms and they're using them for desert racing. However, there's no anti-sway bars. So when we get into these curves, this thing really leans. Still not as bad as that 55 T-Bird. That thing, the door handles were touching, it felt like. Whoa! <laughs> this is about, as, that's 35. <laughs> that's 35, we can't go, not go faster than that. These trucks, pretty simple compared to a modern truck. Let me show you all the amenities. Number one, very important, the ashtray. Look at this thing. This is a giant. <laughs> this is like for cigars, all kinds of stuff. This is back when smoking was a priority. Also, this is a sport custom 
and then it also had the Explorer trim level, which you could see on the glove box there. So it says Explorer. And look at this. That's the real deal glove box right there. You could put several, several pairs of gloves. This has a radio from probably like the 80s or 90s, maybe 90s. The LCD is burnt out, but... The single speaker. It's obviously blown. It's got to be blown. Because you crank this up so loud to even hear anything. We've got our heat. And it slides. Got your heat, your defrost. You got cold and hot, and your fan. That's it. It does have a cigarette lighter, which is missing. This is your emergency flashers. You just pull them out and bada bing, bada boom, you got flash. This is your shifter, three speed automatic. Over here, this is an add on a uh, manual choke because this truck was from Arizona and the uh, years ago they must have swapped the carburetor to a manual choke. This is our windshield wipers. And that's slow. It's no and slow. Wow. There's not even fast. Oh my goodness. Here's your lights. Boom. And if you really want, Wilster, look up there. Dome light. The original lens cover and everything. And it has the original headliner. This is a very early headliner made of cardboard. We have vents look down there if you open that up that's your vent for fresh fresh outside air i have a vent here on my side right here that's open that's shut this also has the smoking windows they call it <laughs> and uh no no vintage truck is complete if it doesn't have at least 50 cents holding the window shut. How much, how much? 75. 75 cents, that's a 75 cent window over there. And the Armstrong window. Most, uh, most people your age have never seen that before, Will. Mm -hmm. And uh, rear view mirror with the daylight and nighttime option. This is fairly rare. These are the camping mirrors or the trailer mirrors and uh, try to find a set of these nowadays. You, they are not easy to come by. Oh, what else do we got? Sun visors? Yes. And, oh my goodness. <laughs> I forgot to clean the barn dust off the sun visors. Oh man. <laughs> also, the seatbelt is kind of weird, isn't it? So it's like an adjustable on one side, but it's a retractable on the other. So you get to do both retraction and adjustion. I do it just like an airliner. And then you pull so it's tight upon your... <laughs> Let's go outside, Will. I want to show you something unique about the exterior of this truck. This tailgate. So, Will, see if you, well, you probably already know how. Most people your age would not know how to open this tailgate. Give it a shot. The handle pulls sideways. It's a sideways handle. And try to shut it. Does it? It won't just shut. You have to use the handle. That's cool. Okay, watch this. Where you put the fuel right here, because the gas tank is behind you in the inside the cab. That makes sense. Now, how about the hood? This does not have an internal hood latch. Right under here, and you open the hood. Now. 
because we were kind of doing like a resto mod well not even a resto mod we were just doing like a revival i call it like a survivor reviver that's i just made that up i kept the original air cleaner because it still had the original paint and the original sticker i think that's pretty cool And the original air cleaner nut. It's kind of a unique hold down nut. I did paint the rest of the motor and we painted the inner fenders. But we left a lot of the stuff kind of original, the brackets. I had the radiator restored, all new belts, all new hoses, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to leave it kind of original as much as we could. Even under the hood, must have had a carb fire at one time. This thing came out of Arizona, that's pretty cool. So in our last video, it was a cliffhanger. This truck really took a lot out of me. It was so difficult to finish it because there was just things that kept breaking and breaking and we were making trips to the junkyard. We were just trying to find all these parts. I can't even go into it. Basically, I got so burned out, I quit filming altogether. So the last thing I filmed was we had to take it back to the transmission shop because it was making a weird noise in the transmission. Well, it turned out that I had to pull the transmission. We brought it back to his shop. He took the transmission all apart. He said, everything looks excellent. I sent the torque converter back to the torque converter rebuild shop. And this is what they believe may have happened. The torque converter for this truck is an unusual torque converter. There's not many of them around. Uh, for this era of truck, there could have been like five different designs. Well, it's possible that the one that they grabbed maybe was never rebuilt. Maybe it just was in the box. I don't know for sure, but they took it apart, they rebuilt it, and gave it back to me. I put everything back together, and the transmission is A-OK, -okay, 100% good to go so uh, but other than that it's great everything runs and drives good and we're on to more projects so this is our final drive in this truck it's our final video as far as I know and uh, so it's awesome it's a super cool old truck and it's one of the nicest driving old trucks because everything's new new shocks new brakes new suspension uh, bushings obviously the steering gear the rag joint I mean you name it, it's all brand new underneath the skin and it drives like a brand new truck. So we love it. If you got an old truck, it's worth it. Keep it on the road. Now this has the mighty Ford 360 big block. It's a two barrel carburetor, but it's the biggest motor you could get in a half ton two wheel drive in this year. You could get a 390 if you had a four by four. So we're gonna see how powerful this motor is we're gonna see if we can go zero to 60. I mean, it can go zero to 60, but we'll see if we can get there before this corner. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. I never made it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get a longer stretch of road. <laughs> we could do this one. Okay, one more shot. Oh, big power. Pushing it back in your seat, boy. Hopefully we can get up to 60 before we have to turn. And there. It's 14 and some change. Nice. That works. Yeah. That works. See? That's really slow. <laughs> <laughs>